What's up, everyone? This is Dwight with Retro Crypto. What a beautiful day it is today. Nice rebound from yesterday. It was pretty scary stuff. But before we go into it, must remind everybody, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just another guy out there on the internet who loves cryptocurrency. It's essential you do your own research. Do not make any financial decisions without doing your own research. It's essential for your success. And with that said, talking about success, boom, I think it was at 440 of followers. Thank you, guys. That means so much to me. You have no idea. It, lets, it tells me that I'm on to something here. It tells me I'm going the right direction. Had a coworker come up and say to me that he's been watching the channel, which is was my initial motivation because people kept asking questions and I would you know say the same thing over and over again. But it's so much easier if I just have a channel and there it is and it's up to you to grab that information. But everybody that has subscribed and been liking the videos, I thank you sincerely. Just truly, truly do thank you. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, give it a try. Just hit the button, you know, put your hand on the mouse, click on subscribe, point at it. it. Only takes a second, guys, and it helps me out so much. I know every YouTuber says the same thing, and it's annoying, but it is so true. And it's really hard to get that synergy rolling with the YouTube YouTube um, search engine algorithm. But with that said, all right, just remember to subscribe, hit the like button. Thanks, guys. All right. Let's move it forward to the market. All right behind me, you have the uh, website Crypto Bubbles. It's just a fun one to look at. And always remember, you can scroll down here, you know, more old school style. But you see, the market is uh, beautiful today. Got FTM making a nice rebound, 14%. Who else is up? Matic, 14%. Polygon. Uh, wow. It's really looking good. Got Near, 19.9. I remember saying something on a previous video, like, I need to look into Near more. And I didn't, and it looks like they're really making some waves right now. And I still haven't looked into them. See, the problem with crypto world is there's so many opportunities, and it's next to impossible for you to really keep up with it. That's why a lot of the, the big-time YouTubers, they actually have, like, little teams, little armies behind them, keeping up with everything that's going on. Now, now that I said that, before I go into my normal routine, guys, do me a favor. In the comments, suggest cryptocurrencies you want me to look into to investigate do videos on i don't care if it appears to be garbage or somebody said it was garbage but you're still got your fingers crossed i love to hear about it in the comments i like to look them up and let you guys know what i think if you have any questions there's no such thing as a dumb question ask away i'll do my best to help you and if i can't i'll be honest and i'll tell you the truth and i'll try to point you in the right direction um yeah but definitely Shoot me whatever projects you think is worth looking into because there's so many out there and there are gems hidden in this bull slash bearish market. It doesn't matter what market you're in. It could be bull or bearish. There's going to be hidden gems. When the market took off over a year ago now, uh, actually I'm about a year exactly, actually, to tell you the truth. But when the market took off, it didn't all take off at once. And it's going to continue to be the same way. Even in the bear market, you're going to have things do very well. And... That just came out of nowhere, and you just wish you heard about it sooner. But with that said, I'm just, leave comments. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, this is something we were talking about just the other day, and I'm glad I left this chart here. This is the overall crypto market, and you'll see that this is where I said the resistance was. It actually broke that resistance here. It came down. I was a little worried, if you remember. Then it broke past it, and that's what scared me yesterday when I saw it break past it. But right now, we're looking good. Actually, we're on an uptrend. I can actually build a little uptrend. You know what? Let's do this now. Uh, here, it only takes a second. So we're going to build a little trend line here. So right now, we're on an uptrend. Now, when I build this trend line, the goal is to not see it drop underneath of that trend line. It continue on an upper pattern. If it does drop underneath of it, it kind of tells you you're still, you're either going to be going, um, was it horizontal or you may actually still be on that, at that decline. So we'll leave that there. We'll see where it is tomorrow. All right. Uh, Bitcoin. Let's take a peek at Bitcoin. Bitcoin scared the crap out of me. Yesterday, I actually was banging my head against the wall because I didn't take all my profits. I didn't take any profits and I know better. And I keep doing the same thing over and over. Every big time YouTuber warns you the same thing over and over, and I keep not doing it. So I'm taking profits, and I'm going to show you guys how where I'm putting it at the end of this video. 
but I'm not taking all my profits at all. I still think there's a ways to go, but you've got to have money on the side. Um, you'll see where Bitcoin came down here. It dropped underneath this line of resistance roughly on the 5th of January. And then it kind of went up, then it went then it went all the way under it, and then it got caught by another line of resistance. And, f and then yesterday, it peaked through that line of resistance right here at 39,000. And that was a key resistance point. But fortunately, it came back up, and I'm praying that we could break past this resistance line up here, get it up here somewhere. I think we should get towards like 4,300, 4,3,5. Then I can start feeling more confident in it. But um, yesterday scared the crap out of me, guys. Make sure you have your ducks in a row. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the best way I could put it. Uh, now, first things first, always first, Hex. Pulse Chain, Pulse X News. Richard Hart, uh, he did a tweet today. It was a pretty good tweet. It was interesting. He said, PulseChain.com update. Check out what the Ethereum testnet bridge looks like. Ready for public testing soon. Check out PulseX.com. Uh, PulseChain just, the dot com, all it did was just state that that sacrifice pierce over. You need to go to PulseX. I've been kind of frustrated because I felt like Pulse, with all the technology, effort, money being spent in the background, I felt like Pulse Chain's website should have been updated, but so is life. I'm sure they're so busy. It's a lot of the, the smaller macro little things you just want to keep up with. But um, now I got a video of what Pulse Chain Bridge is actually going to look like, if you guys like to see it. And it's not my video. I'm kind of stealing it. I'm stealing it from Trayvon James. He actually uploaded this earlier today. Um, he is a hexagon. I know a lot of guys have issues with him due to projects he took part in the past. It's not his fault that things happened that did. Things do happen. But um, here, check out this video. And that is very dope to see. Now, I've seen, um, I've actually seen video of this. This was sent to me. I'm not going to say who it was, but this was sent to me back in before Christmas. It was so hard for me not to show this, but now that Richard Hart has tweeted something, it's like, okay, it's a real thing. So I don't know if this is the same, because it says built by post chain community members, um, but it looks clean and it looks, looks scrumptious actually. I can't wait to bridge over some tokens or tokens. I can see how this could be a monster as far as the bridge, if the bridge, if, if you know speculation you know the spe the whole speculation about the bridge and all these you know he keeps tweeting out so far minus hex over what you know we can say probably about 300 million in stable coins with bridges you can set limits to how much someone can bridge at a time so for example say i put say i build a bridge and i put 1 million usdc on the bridge so that means that people on with PUSDC can pull, can deposit their PUSD, get the USDC out of that one million and go over to ETH and vice versa. Now there's PUSD in the pool in place. So just like a just like Uniswap. So basically that I could set limits to say the person can only do 10,000 at a time per day per month, per week, per year. I can set the rules. So I'm just saying if, if this dude puts all of them stable coins on the bridge, it's going to make Pulse Chain be worth at least how much is on the damn bridge. I mean, hello. <laughs> but, all right, guys. Uh, as you can see, he's a pretty charismatic guy. Uh, he's also funny as heck. But again, that was Trayvon James. That was a peek at the um, Pulse, the Pulse X, Pulse Chain Bridge. All right. All right. Now let's look at the sacrifice going on here. Uh, I'm going to say Pulse X is definitely defeating Pulse, Pulse Chain Sacrifice. The way it's looking is going to be winning. That's why I'm glad I went more heavier on Pulse Chain. Because that's telling me that Pulse Chain will be, I don't know the right words, like a rarity, a rarity, but I think that might be correct. Um, there's less, there's less Pulse Chain than it will be Pulse X out there floating around. All right, uh, jump forward here. Pulse X sacrifice already started. No, duh. Let's see where we're at now. Price, we're at 882 million. 
$717,518. It is killer. A lot of money floating in there out there, guys. A lot of money. There's only 43 minutes to get in on this phase of it. Right now, for every 10,000 Pulse X tokens, you will, or points, sorry, points, you will receive, uh, it, it will be, well, I'm sorry, for every 10,000 Pulse X points, it's $1.10 that you have to invest. So, uh, about 42 minutes, it should go up to $1.15, and it's going to keep ticking up every day. So, if, you, if you're on the edge, if you want to do it or not, you want to make sure you get this done. All right? Here, this is where we are at the point. And this will be up here. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is on PulseX.com's website. All right, moving on. All right, Hex. Let's do a little bit of Hex charting real quick here for fun, just to see where we stand. We know that we're going to be fine in the long run, but Hex, the moving average, the 20-day moving average just slipped under the 200-day, which is really bad. Um, so I could see Hex doing a little bit of a pullback, maybe to about 20 cents. I'm hoping not, but I can see it coming. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, let's see here. This resistance did hold last time, and it's at about 18 cents, 18 and a half cents, basically, where it held at that resistance. That's why I'm thinking it could pull back there. But if it does, just hodl. You know it's going to be, it's going to the moon. It's going to take off to the rocket ship. You'll see. All right. On a fit retracement, looking at Hex. Going backwards, going down from the top because it's still on a downward slope. Uh, until it passes over this 50% mark, which is about I don't know, roughly 26.268 cents. Uh, until it passes over that, I'm going to consider it in a bear trend. Now, when it goes past that, then definitely going to say, all right, now they're gone bullish. And yeah, you're going to wish you brought some when they were in a bear trend. Keep that in mind. Especially if you believe in Hex, Richard Hart, where the project's going. All right. All right. Let's see here. Now, this is something I wanted to play for you guys because I'm trying to try different things. But this is key, and this is important, and this is about Cardano. And I love that project. B&B, really good right there. Solana, Cardano. I've been market buying Cardano for the first time in maybe about a year. You know, I jumped in under a dollar. I haven't bought in a very long time. So... It feels good to uh, actually be able to use this coin that all the people have been telling me over the past year, oh, it's good, and this is why, and oh, now I actually see good Web3 wallet, you know, integration on some of these websites. So the tech, it's it's a little bit different. I think Richard kind of hit the nail on the head last night. All the Ethereum forks chose this specific language. Cardano chose a different one. So if you're learning a coding language, nine of your friends know Solidity, and then two of them know, say, Plutus you're probably gonna learn Solidity. So the growth has been a little slow with Cardano, but we're finally starting to see a little action. Let's check out the top. All right, now with that said, with the Solidity in Plutus, you know what that really reminds me of, guys? Because that was also Richard Hart he was referring to that was talking about it last night. Richard Hart's not a fan of the Cardano project. Never has been. Um, da -da -da -da. It reminds me of Apple and Microsoft. It really does. Like, the rest of this doesn't mean anything. I just wanted this picture right here to show you. But it really reminds me of Apple and, um, and um, Microsoft. And it's kind of disturbing because everybody and anybody knows Apple is better. But everybody uses Microsoft. So... It really makes me wonder where is the crypto world going to go? Is Cardano going to go down in history or, you know, move forward with, well, they're definitely the stronger blockchain and they're much, well, they're, the development of it is much better. There's less everything problems, you know, hacks, all this stuff. But because Microsoft is easier, more open source, whatever. So everybody, you know what I'm going at with this? So it really makes me wonder where things are going to go because it really feels like that's the way that it may go, which is going to be interesting in itself. Either way, if you're better on Cardano, you're going to you're going to be great. But it just feels like it's going that direction right now. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think about that. Really, it is important to me because inquiring minds want to know. All right, let's keep going. All right, so here's Cardano. Uh, yeah, it looks bad. Looks better than yesterday, but it still looks pretty bad, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's bad. 
Anyway, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just thinking to myself out loud. All right, so yesterday, Cardano, what was yesterday? The 10th. Cardano on the 10th dropped down to as low as $1.09. It has rebound today up to $1.18, which is a nice rebound in a day with the rest of the market. Um, Cardano is far from dead. It's just going through some growing pains. Uh, project has moved slow. It will always move slow. But it, it nothing just rushed the market. Whereas with Microsoft, example... Oh, man, what was that operating system that came out in the year of 2000? It was the Millennium, I think it was. It was horrible. How could you print a product out like that? I'm not. I'm just going to leave it at that. I think you guys know where I'm going at with this. Ethereum, it was the second uh, blockchain that became extremely popular. So I'm not I'm not beating up on uh, Vitalik Buterin, but it's just very frustrating. It is unusable. And if you're a hexagon, you don't gotta be a hexagon. If you like NFTs, if you just wanted to dabble a little bit, it's too expensive to use. If you're trying to buy a thousand dollars worth of crypto on on Uniswap or One Inch or whatever, and they you're trying to buy a thousand dollars worth of this token, but they want a fee of two hundred and fifty dollars. What? So something I don't know. All right, let's keep it rolling. Uh, Cardano is sitting right on his this this resistance line right here, which is a good thing. If they uh, whoa 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 whoa. Oh no no, I'm sorry. That was the older one. That was it actually dropped beneath it yesterday. That's what scared me yesterday. When I saw Cardano drop beneath this resistance line, it scared me because the next drop was like all the way down to like a dollar, a dollar and two cents. But um, right now it's rebounded off of that. And it's gone back above it. So I feel I buy Cardano every day. So you know what? A dollar cost average every day. So yesterday I made a purchase on with my Voyager app that happens automatically. Uh, the, I wish I didn't throw my phone. It always makes noise. So I get mad and throw it. But um, I probably made a purchase on my, my app yesterday for like a dollar oh seven or something. Just to give you guys an example. But today is at a dollar eighteen. That's the trick of dollar cost averaging. Over the course of the year, it should work out. In your favor. All right, let's keep this moving. Also, oh, the MACD just saw it. MACD is looking like it's trying to go. It is not trying. The MACD right here is going bullish. Well, Cardano, we cross over to red, so it is going bullish. So that's something to keep in mind too. All right, all right. Polka dot, polka dot. Do not sleep on polka dot. Polka dot is so damn quiet. Excuse my French, but. You don't want to sleep on it. But as of right now, the 20-day moving average is on the bottom, which is bad, bad, bad. That's horrible. Um, the 50 day is on the 50 and the 20 is underneath for the two 200 day moving average. So that's not looking good. 100 days barely over it. But the one good thing about Polkadot is it has a very strong resistance line that's holding out since December 20th. So is that's a very 1.2.3 is good. Um but yeah, hopefully it starts to, uh, our size picked up a little bit. So we'll have to see where it goes. Polkadot's a long-term investment. You're not going to go around with Polkadot. You may have to be patient, but you're not going to go around with it. All right. Now, Polkadot, this is what I this is what I have been doing, and it's not actually correct. And I should find a safer way of going about it, but I have not. Qcoin offers a 12% um, staking reward. So you buy you can buy your Polkadot on Qcoin exchange and just stake it it's really easy to do and then you get 12 percent. so to me it's a no-brainer I, I don't know now here's a catch you leave your money on an exchange you're actually potentially setting yourself up for failure you should never leave anything on exchange that you're not willing to lose and i will admit my polka dots getting to the point where i'm not willing to lose it you know what i mean but you should always keep your the vast majority of your cryptocurrency on i actually prefer a hard wallet like a ledger or a treasure something that you really trust um but you definitely don't want to leave it exodus wallet's not that but it's a good wallet metamask the list goes over and on but you don't want to leave it on the exchanges um exchanges get hacked exchanges go under exchanges practically literally used to disappear 
Um, things are better now. It's not quite the old West, but yeah. Anyway, but they are offering 12%. Sorry, a little bit of a tangent there. All right, Phantom. Phantom's looking quite potentially delicious lately. Did I say delicious? Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. The 20 day moving average is above the 200, which is good, but it's underneath the 100 and it's underneath the 50 day. So we need to get this 20 day swinging up here to really say that it's bearish mode. Um, but you can see, I see a W here, which is supposed to mean win. We'll see. I see a little W formation there, which I saw a good sign. RSI is at a pretty good spot. It's not only overbroad, oversold, but it's definitely more so on the broad than underbroad, if that makes sense to you. Right. Phantom. Oh, wow. Okay. Phantom's looking really good to me. All right. Finally, one of them's approaching it. All right. When I do this Fibonacci retracement here every day, guys, you see this 50% mark? When it approaches this 50% mark, it is, that is the point of, all right, is this about to go bullish and start on an uptrend or is it going to get rejected and stay bearish? Now, I'm hoping this goes past this because as soon as it passes this, I'm going to say it's on an official uptrend and you're going to be really glad that you brought some yesterday or earlier this week if you get my drift. Because that is how it works, guys. You want to buy it when the market's down and sell it when it's up and everybody does the opposite. That's the one thing I've learned and I do get right. All right. <sighs> Terra Luna. All right, we're approaching towards the end of the video. All right, now this is important, guys. Stop and listen to this. All right, Terra Luna. It's a good long-term buy. Long-term. This is long-term, though. So don't get this thing as a quick flip. This is, like, healthy. Like, if you look at the growth of it, you'll notice it's just, it's not like this crazy parabolic, oh, it's all over the place chart. It's very healthy, Okay. And I'm pretty sure you understand what I mean. If you don't get it, <laughs> if you don't get that, I don't know what to do. But uh, right now, it is pretty far under that 50% point. So it's definitely in a bearish trend, downtrend still. But it's still a good buy. Because you see it topped out not too long ago at $103. And that was on roughly around Christmas. Now, now that's the Terra Luna. Now... Here's the part that I really want to show you. Now, Terra Luna, I do own, and I've done very well with it. I've talked about it before previously. I've done very well with Terra Luna. I'm hearing, you know, $300 range, and then I hear a ridiculous range. So $300 range is probably more practical. Um, UST, this is just a stable coin, but it's on Terra Luna. I'm going to say it again. UST is just a stable coin, but it resides on Terra Luna blockchain. Okay. Now that I said that... <sighs> You can pick up UST definitely on Coinbase Pro and on Qcoin. I know for a fact you, those are two exchanges you can pick it up at. And let's cover this real quick because a lot of people don't know. If you're frustrated, I'm showing people this. I apologize. I was, I was almost done, guys. Hold on. All right, so I went to CoinGecko real quick. I click on Markets. When the Markets, you click on Markets, and it's going to tell you where you get your coin at. So you'll see Qcoins, Qcoin, Binance, Binance, S. Does, you can't use Binance in the U.S. It's got to be Binance.us. Yeah, Coinbase Exchange, Osmosis, and a bunch of other stuff here. Uniswap. But Uniswap, I mean, okay. Anyway, <laughs> you get the idea. All right, back to what I was saying here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take profit. I'm going to put it in the UST coin. Then I am going to stake it on Anchor Protocol. Anchor Protocol is good, guys. It's been around for a while. It's a name that I was hearing during the bear market when uh, probably a lot of you weren't even watching videos, to tell you the truth, uh, because people get frustrated, disappointed. That's when you want to keep watching. If you didn't watch a video yesterday with times were bad, you're going the wrong direction. You want to, the crypto, it never dies, all right? It'll crash, but it doesn't die, and it will come back. Just the way we're looking at it. Um, but, uh, Anchor, I'm going to start taking profits, and I'm going to move them over to Anchor. I'm not playing this game. I was panicking a little bit yesterday. My wife's like, I guess we're not going to buy a new house now. And I was like, because I don't want to, I don't want a loan. And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But it, 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 things are working out. Also, I met with my accountant yesterday. Now I'm blabbing a little bit. I'm just being myself. I saw my accountant yesterday in the U.S. for taxing. 
you have crypto goes by FIFO. So it's first in, first out. So whatever you brought first, whenever you sell it, that's what they're taxing first. And then whatever you brought second, that's what gets taxed second. So first in, first out when you do your taxation. And it's called is um F I F L FIFO. Um and short term, which is under a year, is up to, I believe, 35%. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just an ordinary guy on the internet. It's up to 35%. But depending on your financial situation, it may be less. And I've been allocating according to 35%. Yesterday, I was talking to the accountant. He was like, eh, 22%. So I was like, oh, sweet. Then I'll do 25 and I'm happy. You know what I mean? Now, if you do anything over a year that you hold and then you sell, it's only 15%. So... And with all that said, pay your taxes, guys. Stay out of trouble. It's not worth it. All right. Saw so this news article. I thought it was pretty interesting. Hopefully, you guys find it interesting. Coinbase announces nearly the entire company will shut down for four week long breaks in 2022 to allow workers to recharge. Given the intensity of our work throughout the year, we think this is the best way to ensure our pace is sustainable for the long term, said Chief People Officer L.J. Brock. Let me jump over here because I can't read there. All right. Major U.S. crypto exchange Coinbase will be giving its employees one week off each quarter in 2022 to recharge after long days and long weeks of intense work. In Monday, blog post Coinbase chief people officer L.J. Brock said nearly the entire company will shut down for four separate weeks this year as part of an experiment and allowing workers to recuperate after completing intense workloads. Brock said the exchange's employees are, aren't are necessarily limited to 40-hour work weeks and may have to pivot at a moment notice, seemingly creating the potential for burnout. We realized in 2020 that many employees weren't taking enough time off to recharge, either because they didn't want to force their teammates to cover for them or because they didn't want to fall behind on their workload uh, work, said Brock. We knew this was unsustainable, we, so we scheduled a recharge week at the end of 2020 and two, and two recharge weeks of 2021 when nearly the entire company was shut down. Subsequent employee surveys made it clear recharge weeks work. Coinbase added, for, uh, how far do I want to go? I'm sorry. All right. Four weeks of coordinated recharge time might sound like a lot of time off a company in hyper growth, but given the intensity of the work throughout the year, we think this is the best way to ensure our pace is sustainable for long term. All right, so they got them. They're, they're suffering. They're victims of their success over there. I understand. Um, my job, I'm burning out. And, but a lot of my burn, my burnouts due to COVID and stuff. But I'm definitely burning out, so I, I understand. All right, let's, let's go to the next one here. All right, FTC issues public warning about new crypto ATM scam. Uh, what would a bull market be without a crypto scam? But nobody listens to the scams anymore because guess what? They're scams with the U.S. dollar every day, all day long. All right, here we go. The United States Federal Trade Commission published an alert of a new version of scam involving cryptocurrencies. The scam has three key components, an impersonator, a QR code, and a crypto ATM where the victims will be directed to send money. According to the FTC, Foresters, Pretend to be a public officials, law enforcement agents, or employees of local utility companies. The imposters also utilize dating apps and pretend to be potential romantic partners or call victims to announce that you've won a prize. No matter how it starts, it always ends up with the scammer asking for money. If the user falls for the excuse me spiel, the scammer tells them to withdraw some cash and go to a crypto ATM. After that, they ask to purchase crypto through the ATM. Here, the QR code comes into play. They share the QR code of their wallet address with the victim. Because of this, once the victim scans the code, the purchased crypto assets w- uh, would transfer to the fraudster's account. Christina Miranda from FTC's Division of Consumer and Business Education explained, Here's the main thing to know. Nobody from the government, law enforcement, utility company, or price border will ever tell you to pay them with cryptocurrency. If someone does, it's a scam every time. We'll see how long that's true. But anyway, <laughs> um, that is it for today's video. Guys, remember, please.
please leave comments, suggestions, opinions. I'm looking for projects to look into. Uh, I, I, I wanna, I'm kind of spending a lot of time making my videos, but I got to keep my basket full too. So I'm always constantly learning. So help a brother out. Shoot me a tip. I'm sure that, I mean, you can learn something from a two-year-old. I'm a strong believer in that. But um, other than that, guys, until next time, stay blessed, stay happy. Most of all, cha-ching, stay profitable. All right.